All right, people, welcome back. More card review. So today we are looking at a new DDD card. Yes, DDDs are still getting that good support. And as you guys know, I am a DDD expert that knows how to play DDDs the best. It's just, and uh, I guess I'll be going ahead and uh, reviewing the card and giving my opinion of it. And, uh, if you actually believed all that, then I am a <laughs> great liar. <laughs> anyway, this is uh, DD Savant Thomas. Thomas the Train, Tom... Thomas Pickles from Rugrat, no, uh, obviously it's Thomas Edison, you know, uh, a lot of their cards have to do with um, scientists like that, Newton and Thomas, and I believe they're gonna, and Kepler, and I believe that they're getting uh, Tesla too, so uh, if they're getting that, we'll go ahead and review that, but uh, this is Thomas, this is Thomas, and we're gonna go ahead and look at it, he is a pendulum-based monster, which is uh, pretty good, so uh, hopefully his effects serve to help the deck combo, because that's what you need in DD. That's that deck is so combalicious that uh, I would just not do, you know, I, I would get stumped, you know. I, don't, I think out of all the decks that I, uh, on Daily Duels where I would just time out, it was definitely DDD where I'd just be like, oh, well, I'm out of time. I, was, uh, I couldn't figure out what to do to play because there's just so many combos with this deck. So uh, let's see if uh, Thomas adds on to them's combo. So he is a Dark Fiend, a Pendulum Effect Monster. Uh, he is level 8, Pendulum Scale of 6. Not bad. 1800 attack, 2600 defense. So the 2600, yeah. 18? Nah, that's not, that's not bad to me. It's pretty bad for a level 8, but uh, it's not bad, terrible attack wise, just in general. So, like I said, he's a pendulum based monster. He has a pendulum effect and a monster effect. So let's go ahead and look at both. So, pendulum effect reads During your main phase, you can add one face up DD pendulum monster from your extra deck to your hand. You can only use the effect of DD Savant Thomas once per turn. That's good. That is good. Uh, you know, I know DD expert, but I definitely know there are times when you want to get that Kepler back. You summon Kepler, it's either through normal summoning or one for one. You summon that Kepler, get the search, Kepler dies, it goes back to the extra deck. It's a level one. There's no pendulum summoning that back. So, it's stuck, you know? But this card, this card says go ahead and uh, add that face up DD pendulum monster from the extra deck back to your hand. So, play this in your pendulum zone, activate the effect. Go ahead and get that Kepler right back to your hand. Summon Kepler, get to search. So, uh, definitely uh, a great card, you know. Uh, right there, giving back your uh, resources up there with, like, Newton and stuff. So, uh, Pendulum Effect? Yeah, you, you get a thumbs up. I I'm fine with that. Let's look at that Monster Effect. You can target one DD card in your Pendulum Zone, right? Any battle damage your opponent takes becomes half for the rest of the turn. Also, destroy that card, and if you do, special summon one level 8 DDD monster from your deck and defense position, but its effects are negated this turn. You can activate the effect of DD7 Thomas once per turn. This just screams, go into Yuga. Go into Yuga, because of course, Thomas here is level 8, who will then summon a level 8. You have two level 8 monsters on the field. You go. <laughs> uh, hit your opponent with that chair, that nice and powerful chair. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, um, go ahead and target a DD, uh, DD card in your Pendulum Zone, whether it be uh, you put, like, Ragna in your Pendulum Scale or Copernicus or, uh, you know, another Thomas or a Kepler. You know, you know, sometimes the deck does some Pendulum plays. Sometimes it doesn't, but there are some Pendulum-based cards that you're not running them just because they're Pendulum-based cards. They have synergies with their deck and... They, them being pendulum based monsters is just a bonus. That additional effect, the, the ability to pendulum summon, it's just a bonus. So go ahead and when you summon this monster, you can go ahead and target that DD uh, card. Go ahead and you'll probably be uh, special summoning. There's not a, too many other, uh, level 8. Uh, I guess you can go ahead and summon. I believe it specifies it has to be a DDD. So 3Ds, not 2. I think, I think it has to be 3. So. Um, you can summon that one 3,000 guy. I forgot his name because I didn't play him. I mean, he's a 3,000 beater, but isn't that any certain to combo? But the one I'm definitely thinking of is Ragnarok. I mean, come on. So, it kind of sucks that your effects are negated because it would have been nice to, you know, get that effect and get that effect and go off like that. But no, uh, the monster summon is in defense position. I mean, Ragnarok has a fine booty. I mean, I'm not checking out Ragnarok's booty, but you should probably check out Ragnarok's booty. Uh, effects are negated, which kind of sucks, but like uh, I said, R Ragnarok, level 8. This, level 8, I mean, 
easy, easy, easy rank eight right there, whether it be Felgrand or Hope or Yuga. I mean, the access to uh, to more rank eights and do these is totally fine. You know, the quicker and stronger and faster you can get out Yuga. I mean, there's no complaints there. You get all the cards in the field and have a heavy storm effect with the and hit someone with the chair. Like, oh come on. So uh, definitely, it helps with the count pieces. So getting Gaki Kebler and Summoning that Ragnarok for some more rank 8 Yuga plays, I, you know, I like it, I like it. So, of course, if uh, if these were still on daily duels, would I be running this in the the deck? Definitely, definitely. Uh, also give me more reason to Pendulum Summon and do all that, you know, with with uh, with Ragnarok and Kepler and Copernicus and this and... And uh, Newton, there's just a lot of more pendulum-based monsters in the deck that will allow you pendulum some and uh, pull plays off uh, more extended plays like this. So, you know, I have no complaints with this card. I really don't, you know. Uh, I'm definitely just, you know, put, like, you know, Copernicus and Kepler and pendulum scale. Pendulum summon this. This effect, I'll go ahead and target Kepler, destroy it. I mean, it'll go to the extra deck, which is fine. Uh, and then go ahead and summon a... Uh, level 8 DDD monster from my uh, deck, so make my rank exceeds, and then, of course, Kepler will be an extra deck, if I get another uh, Thomas, I can play Thomas, Thomas will go ahead and activate his effect, get me Kepler, summon Kepler, get to search for my dark contacts, he, you see in the combo, the combo is here, so, uh, definitely, Thomas is uh, a definite in the DDD deck, in my opinion, and uh, I'm just glad that I got to go ahead and review it, like I said, uh, was the deck really fun? Yeah, it's just uh, I really couldn't handle the criticism and the backseat dueling, and uh, it started being less fun, but is the deck fun? Definitely. It's a very combo central deck, a very skill-heavy deck. It's not just a deck you can pick up and be like, derp, herp, derp, 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 I can play Yu-Gi-Oh! Definitely not. Not skillless track. DD is probably, arguably, top five most skilled decks in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, it's, it's skill. Like, if you don't know the combos and you're not thinking, like, freaking three steps ahead, you could easily mess something up, you know? So, and I know I definitely did. So, anyway, tell me what you guys think about Thomas in the comment section below. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed this card review. I believe, like I said, DDs are getting some more cards. We'll review that. We have a ton of cards to look at. Like, holy crap. It seems like every week I review two. And then, in that week span, we get, like, five new cards. And it's just like... Fuck, you know, and uh, generally I don't I don't touch upon archetypes. I save that for either when the deck goes up on daily duels or you know, I have nothing to talk about. I could just talk about the archetype. So I know you're probably thinking like, well, you know, you know, the Tramid, I mean, that's an archetype, you know, uh, kind of stay about that. I try to look at each end of a card unless I've already done before. Cause you're probably like, well, why the hell you didn't ruin the card? Because A, I've already reviewed DD cards before and B, I played the deck. You know, I, I don't want to give you my opinion of the Tramid cards and I never touched the deck before, you know, so. Yeah, and then so if you think I'm going to be reviewing any trend Mead cards anytime soon, no. But uh, <laughs> for now, uh, just go ahead and tell me what you guys think about uh, Thomas in the comments section below. Of course, we'll be back next week with some more cards to look at. So thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And uh, yeah, see you guys uh, next week with some more cards to look at for card review. All right, people. Thanks for watching.